Hey friends, I'm Father Ryan Adams, the rector of St. Andrew's Episcopal Church here in Panama City, Florida. And we have been in the middle of a sermon series titled Leaning Into the Peace of God. And the essence of the series is how peace can come after and even through conflict. Well, today is the third sermon in that series, and it looks at the prophet Jonah and how he wrestles with God and how God calls him to grow. I hope that you're blessed, and above all else, I hope you know that you are loved by God. Enjoy the sermon. Let me tell you a story this morning about how religious exclusion is born. Pride needs all of the right answers. And then before long, an addiction to certainty strangles the hope out of love. But to maintain certainty, fear relinquishes hundreds of hours, even dollars, looking for authorities that agree with its position. And when fear empowers pride, prejudice is born. And then finally, the God of its own making gets involved. And that's when those people can be persecuted because they are not the true children of God. Now, does that sound like anything that's made the news in the last few years? Well, in fact, it would fit, but it's the story of the prophet Jonah from the 5th century B.C. So we're in the middle of a sermon series right now on leaning into the peace of God. And today we're going to continue that theme of how peace is on the other side of conflict. Two weeks ago we talked about peace coming through conflict with our sisters and brothers. Last week we looked at conflict within the self. And this week we're going to look at conflict with God. My guess is there's some people in here this morning who have had a conflict with God. You ever been mad at God? You know, if I had to wager, I would assume that I'm not the only one in church today who has struggled with my faith after a tragedy occurred in my life. There are times that I have said to God, I just do not understand why. You would allow this to happen to me. It's just not fair. But the late great philosopher Tupac Shakur said that long live the rose that grew from concrete. What do you mean, Father Adams? I mean that the story of Jonah is the story of all of us. Jonah can't have peace because pride fills his heart. But if we'll just step back for a moment and look at him, well, we can really laugh at ourselves because Jonah's really the mirror to all of us. And the reading talks about him, he's upset. He's pouting, none of us have ever been there, because God doesn't submit to Jonah's will and obey Jonah's expectations. Jonah knows exactly how the world should work. Jonah knows who should be in. Jonah even knows who should be out. Jonah has more wisdom than God. But God normally has a way of speaking to our pride. There's no proverb that says, Pride is a mask of our own faults. God tells Jonah, go and preach to Nineveh. Call them to repentance. But his pride says no. So Jonah, what does he do? He boards a ship going to Tarshish just to let God know who's actually in charge. Now some say Tarshish was in what is modern day Spain. Now keep in mind, this text was written, 5th century B.C., when the earth was still flat. I'll let that sit a moment. People believed that you could fall off of the edge of the earth into oblivion. 
So Jonah decides, I'm not just going to run from God. I'm going to the edge of the map to get away from this foolishness that God has called me to. I'll show God. I'll teach God a lesson. I'll move as far as I have to go to get away from preaching about mercy. Dwight Moody joked one time that God sends no one away empty except those full of themselves in the first place. Now allow me a moment of honesty here. My name is Ryan Adams. I'm Jonah, and I've been to Tarshish. I have a t-shirt that says Tarshish or bust. I went on Airbnb, and I, I reserved a room, and I took a vacation in Tarshish. But here's where it gets real. When I was there, I saw some footprints that looked familiar to me, as if I'm not the only one that I know who's been to Tarshish. We've all been prideful. We've all decided to run from God and run from God's call at points in our life. And there are two reasons that Jonah couldn't have peace. He couldn't have peace to carry out his call. Why? Because pride. And the second, because of prejudice. Pride and prejudice prevent peace. I won't even charge you extra for that. But before I dive into that idea, I do want to look at this book, the context of this writing for just a moment. When the Babylonian armies defeated Israel, to them, the Babylonians defeated their God too. And that defeat turned their theology, their faith into ashes. Now let's apply that to our lives today. When people have a crisis, the natural response is either to abandon their faith in God or transfer that blame from God and absorb it into the self. And the Jews, well, they thought that God judged their nation because they didn't keep all of God's laws and because they were in interracial marriages with Gentiles. And that's when phobia of the other crept into their hearts. See, the problem with that idea was the former prophets foresaw a time when nationality and race would not stand between God and God's people. The prophet Isaiah even said that all people, even to the ends of the earth, even the edge of the map, would be saved because of God's love and for God's glory. So when everyone else was doubling down on their racial distinctive, one man challenged them. The conservative isolationists were in power at the time, so this man couldn't speak out publicly against them. So he sat down at his desk in his house, took out his pen, and he wrote a story about a strange prophet. Bishop Jack Spong, a mentor of mine, refers to Jonah as the definer of prejudice. It was a tale about a prophet. God calls him to go to Nineveh, but he refuses. He hops a ship. He heads to the edge of the earth, but the ship winds up in a horrible storm, so the sailors, they throw Jonah into the sea to appease Jonah's God. And a big fish, a whale, swallows Jonah and holds him in his belly for three full days and three full nights and then pukes him out onto the beach. I've been puked out on a few beaches. I might be the only one. But then, after three days in the stomach acid of the whale, Jonah decides that it is in his best interest to go on to Nineveh and preach. At least he can tell them that God's going to judge them unless they repent. Because there's just no way a city of 200,000 people could hear the message of Jonah's God and turn. But miraculously, the story goes, the entire city, even the government and the king, even the animals repent of their sins. 
But Jonah is mad about it. He's not mad at the city. He's not mad at the king. He's not mad at the cats and the dogs. He's mad at God. He can't believe it. So he goes outside of the city. He sits on a hill. He overlooks the city. And then he demands that God kill him. Now, if you can't see the humor in that. See, his pride put him in the belly of a fish. His prejudice against the Assyrians put him under a plant, wishing for death. And then the rider, he kicks it up a notch. Recent statistical analysis confirms the rider's idea. A recent research partnership between the best universities in the world, Harvard, Yale, Oxford, Cambridge, and of course, Sewanee, revealed a mind-blowing fact that was previously unknown to humanity. And that is this. There is a sure and a certain way to make someone who is mad even more mad. And that is to ask them if they are in fact mad. God said, you mad, John? God's prodding him. Can you see the irony in the writing here? <laughs> hey, John. Hey, John. You mad, bro? And John said, yeah, I'm mad. And I'm going to tell you why I'm mad. Because I knew it. I knew that you would show mercy to all of those heathens. And it disappoints me that your character has such room for that kind of inclusion. And then, boom, the story ends with no resolution. And we're left wondering if Jonah ever turns the curve and allows God to transform his heart and overcome his pride and his prejudice so that the peace of God can reside in his heart. Jesus told a similar story to this in the gospel lesson this morning about workers who get upset because the landowner pays others the same wage as he paid them. They didn't have peace because the landowner's generosity and his mercy was just too wide for them. So let's bring this home today. Jonah did not have peace of soul, nor did the first workers in the gospel because they couldn't work through their theological and their spiritual conflicts, and they blamed God instead of doing the hard and the difficult work of wrestling with God. Y'all know how to say that word in the South, don't you? Wrestling. There wasn't any wrestling with God. You see, it's okay to have a conflict with God, but here's a little secret. God can handle conflict. What's not okay is to surrender our peace of mind and board a ship bound for Tarshish. Amen. Amen.